Maplewood Cemetery in Huntsville, Alabama. One of the oldest in the state. Home to five former Alabama governors, U.S. senators, Confederate leaders and soldiers, socialites, farmers, tailors, people of every vocation imaginable, even a Hollywood actor. And that is the reason we're here today, to tell you about a Hollywood actor who appeared in over 200 productions. A Huntsville, Alabama native, when he passed away in 2001, Maplewood Cemetery would be his final resting place. Some two blocks from his final home. Buried next to his parents and his sister, Harry Rhett Towns is the story I bring you today. So to properly tell this story, we need to turn back the clock. In 1914, Charles and Jean Towns would mourn the loss of their son, Charles Jr. But in September the 18th of that year, they would be overjoyed to welcome baby Harry, soon to be followed by a sister. And throughout his childhood, Harry had a love for entertaining and a thirst for knowledge. In academics, he excelled, and it was no surprise at all to the family that he had aspirations for something greater. Harry's parents, Charles and Jean, would encourage their son in his academic and entertainment pursuits. And unfortunately, not everything was filled with laughter as his father, Charles, would die just eight years into his young life in 1922. Following his graduation from high school, Harry would go on to attend the University of Alabama at Tuscaloosa. After some time at the University of Alabama, Harry had decided to go towards business. But a chance visit to Birmingham, Alabama, and a touring theater production of Richelieu starring Walter Hamden changed everything. On a lark, Harry decided once he graduated from the University of Alabama, he would go on to Columbia University and pursue his love of acting. On graduation and after three years of summer stock, Harry would be in a touring production of his own. Broadway workhorse, Tobacco Road. By the late 1930s, Harry found himself in New York City. An in-demand stage actor, he could seemingly play any role. His credits included in the matter of J. Robert Oppenheimer, William Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, The Gramercy Ghost, and Finian's Rainbow. Harry had come to New York and had carved out a very successful theater career. Audiences were wowed by his range and his ability to move a crowd no matter what part he played. This love affair with the theater would last some two decades, but in 1942, when Uncle Sam came calling, Harry Towns did his duty. Off we go into the wild blue climbing high into the sun. Serving with distinction in the U.S. Army Air Corps, Harry would even have the opportunity to assist Clark Gable with videos for the troops. I've just returned from the 8th Air Force, commanded by General Aker, flying with men who were aviation cadets only a few months ago. All I can say is, I can never hope to be in better company. Those boys can take it. Through 1945, Harry continued to serve with distinction, and then finally, the word everybody wanted to hear, victory. Harry would continue to serve until 1946, when he was given an honorable discharge from the military and returned to the stage. But he wouldn't stay there. Hollywood Hotel. Moment, I'll connect you. By 1949, Harry would answer the siren's call of Hollywood. Television, to be specific, 
and it would be a love affair that would last over 40 years. One of Harry's first television credits would be the popular detective show Martin Kane, in which Harry would be one half of a devilish duo. That was quite a plan of yours, wasn't it, Clara? Oh, proof, I said, Daddy. Harry would go on to appear in over 18 television shows per year, mostly in anthology series where his vast array of characters could be utilized, never typecast. He rarely played the same character twice. That in 1954, Harry got the break most actors only dream of, his own starring movie vehicle, Operation Manhunt. in danger at every moment. At last, it can be told, the fantastic story of a runaway secret agent who carried a nation's top secrets in one pocket and a time bomb in the other. Never before has the screen dared reveal the men, the facts, behind the smash-up of the most dangerous plot ever to threaten our continent. Excuse me, but... One of many Iron Curtain films as they would come to be known during this time, Harry Towns seemed tailor-made for the real-life spy thriller based on the life of Igor Guzinko. Although the film only scored a 5.7 currently on IMDb, most are in agreement the bright spots of Operation Manhunt are thanks to Harry Towns. It's currently available for streaming and is in regular rotation on Turner Classic Movies. Although the television series would truly be Harry's artistic playground, he would go on to appear in 17 motion pictures. His films would include Cry Tough, Screaming Mimi with the one and only Gypsy Rose Lee. The Brothers Kasparov with Yul Brenner and an extremely young William Shatner who he would later go on to star with in Star Trek. And the Dick Van Dyke vehicle Fitz Willie Strikes Again with Agent 99 herself, Barbara Feldon. And although Harry would go back to the silver screen more times in his career, it was truly the television series that spoke to him most the ability to be a wide range of characters for regular work. This was where Harry would spend the majority of the next two decades of his career. Throughout the late 50s and early 1960s, Harry Towns would grace the small screen nearly every single week on shows like Justice, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, Father Knows Best, Have Gun Will Travel, Star Trek, Perry Mason for five episodes, Gunsmoke for seven episodes, where he played seven different characters, Laramie, One Step Beyond, Stagecoach West, The Islanders, The Great Imposter, The Twilight Zone, The Outer Limits, Omnibus, Ripcord, and the list goes on and on and on. If a producer had to fill a TV show, Harry Towns was on that list. Constantly on the go with his career, Harry also enjoyed his solitude. Purchasing this Hollywood Hills home in the early 1960s, Harry loved to entertain family and friends. Deeply private and deeply religious, Harry would look back on his career and look fondly on the times that he was able to portray military characters. He took great pride in knowing what they went through from his own service and wanted to accurately portray them any chance that he got. Confirmed Bachelor, one of Harry's closest friends in the industry was television actor Wright King. He and King would appear together many times, including the television show Johnny Ringo. Previous arrests on identical charges. Armed robbery, assault with a deadly weapon, resisting arrest. Maxon, you seem incapable of living in a civilized world. By the 1960s, Harry had developed quite a reputation for horror, and the Boris Karloff-helmed thriller, an episode entitled Cheaters, 
Harry brought horror to the small screen. It's considered by horror fans to be an instant classic. You're not afraid of your own voice, are you? No. So, you want the truth about yourself, do you? Yes, the jump man, the old lady, and Edward Dean read only the minds of others. Think of the agony they suffered. They were afraid. They let their emotions get out of control. But you are different. This haunting episode received more complaint letters and fan mail than any episode in the show's history. Throughout the 60s, more influential programs would come, such as The Fugitive, and shows from Westinghouse, which dealt with a historical bent. The product for home or business, farm or factory. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. In what? Generally. You overemphasize abolition. In addition to the gravitas of seeing Harry play opposite Daniel Pastine's Abraham Lincoln, there's also a blink and you'll miss it cameo by none other than James Dean. Vermont, sir. You live there? Yes, sir. Vermont. Uh, we got a place up there, sir. A big farm. Who is? Mother, sir. By the late 1960s into the early 1970s, Harry Towns had cemented his legacy as one of the greatest character actors to ever grace the Hollywood screen. Never shying away from any content, he would do work on Planet of the Apes, westerns like Gunsmoke and Bonanza, feature films that dealt into horror such as Strategy of Terror, and then a two-part, well-received arc on David Carradine's Kung Fu. Leaving. She is better. I've seen what you can do. All I have in the world is a sword. It's yours if you do what I want done. An eye for an eye. Keep your sword. You're a man. You feel, don't you care what happened? They raped my little girl. I am a man. I care. Then do something about it. I will do something. I will break the necklace whose beads are vengeance. There has been enough killings. I will end it. If I don't have a right to revenge, who does? No one. By the early 1970s, Harry Towns knew that he was ready for a change. Appreciated by his fans, adored by the industry, Harry Towns would work to become an ordained minister in the Episcopal Church, continuing to act and putting himself through seminary. Finally, the day had come that Harry had so longed for. On March the 13th, 1974, in St. Paul's Cathedral, San Diego, California, Harry Towns, at age 60, became an ordained minister. Another chapter in his life in which he would now serve the citizens of Los Angeles, not just on the silver screen for entertainment, but now for their heavenly home. He would serve them at St. Mary's of the Angels in beautiful Los Angeles, California, which boasted former parishioners like W.C. Fields and Charlie Chaplin. This would be a new step for him, but really nothing new for a man who had given back his entire life. When the country called, he was there. When we needed entertainment, he was there. When he needed an opportunity to give back, he took it. New responsibilities in a new decade, but the 80s would prove just the same. Character actor Harry Towns in high demand. In such shows as Buck Rogers, the television hit Emergency, and Voyagers, to name a few. Perhaps his most notable turn of the 80s is Del Fry in a two-episode arc on the Incredible Hulk. Starring in the two-parter, the first, 
Harry would win a whole new generation of fans and court-like status in the comic book and sci-fi worlds. He would even be brought on to appear in B-action movie schlock like Angel Heat to elevate it and bring in a sophistication that the movie so desperately needed. But, well, you know, Harry can't save them all. The mid-80s would see Harry brought on to be in sword and sorcery epics in television shows such as Magnum P.I. and a recurring role on Knott's Landing. And then finally, his last role ever was that on The Valerie Harper Show, later renamed to The Hogan Family. In 1989, Harry made the decision to finally retire. He would return to his home in Huntsville, Alabama. He would remain here for the final 11 years of his life, enjoying life, enjoying friends and family, talking with members of the local theater about life in Hollywood, and enjoying strawberry waffles at the City Cafe. He also took great pleasure in being a part of walking tours, which would often include his home, and he would talk about old Hollywood with any and all that would come. So this brings us to the place we started our video, Maplewood Cemetery in Huntsville, Alabama. Harry Rhett Towns, 50 years of giving us entertainment, 50 years of serving his country, 50 years of serving people. When asked about his career, Harry had the following to say. I guess we've never entirely happy with what we do. We would like to do better. I feel I was lucky to get the work that I do. You always feel thankful because there are so many actors for so few jobs, and it seems God is being good to you when you get a job. Of course, I would have loved to have done better. We all would. But we always think we can do it better. One more take. On the whole, I'm satisfied, though. As long as the audience was satisfied, then I'm satisfied. And I, for one, Mr. Towns, can definitely tell you we were satisfied. Yours was a life well lived, and you deserve to be remembered. Thank you all for joining me today. It's been my great pleasure to tell you about Harry Red Towns. Passed away at 86 in March of 2001.